Hello friends, welcome back. Today we are diving into a rig build for my Fujifilm X-T5. This is gonna serve as my B cam to shoot alongside my X-H2S. You guys might've seen my rig video for that. So this is gonna be similar, but we're gonna dive into how I actually go about incorporating a V-mount battery with the style of flip screen that this camera has. I hadn't seen anything like this on YouTube, so that was my main hope in putting this out there, was just to show you guys how you are able to incorporate a V-mount battery solution into a camera with this style of screen. So this would also work for the Fujifilm X-T3 as well as any other camera that has a similar style flip screen. In planning this video, I reached out to my friends at Small Rig who were kind enough to send over some of the parts that we're gonna be using in this build today. Other parts I already had just lying around, but I'm gonna make sure and link everything down below so you guys know exactly what I was using. If you are new to the world of V-mount batteries, I would really encourage you to go watch this other video here on my channel as I talk about some of the risks involved with using V-mount batteries and kind of what some best practices are as far as plugging in and unplugging cables. Especially go read the comment section as there was kind of a mixed bag of thoughts, but I tried to summarize them over there. So I just wanted you guys to know that up front if you have not used V-mounts before. Okay, so diving into this rig build, we have the Fujifilm X-T5 right here. I went with the cage from Small Rig, and the main reason I did that is actually they included a HDMI and USB-C clamp that helps protect the ports. So that was a big need for me when I went about building this rig. So I went ahead to save some time and put the cage on the camera. So we're just gonna set that aside and then we're gonna move on to this base plate right here. And you guys will see, I actually already have this taken apart. Typically, this would come attached right here with these little M4 screws. And one custom mod we're gonna make to this starts with taking these two little screws out. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. And then we're gonna move on to this little cheese plate. And so you guys will see why I'm adding this later. It helps us incorporate the LCD screen in a little bit more of a practical way. So we're gonna start by attaching this here to the camera. So we're actually going to attach this kind of like this underneath and you actually are gonna need some screws that do not come with any of these parts. These are M4 screws. I will put on the screen the exact length, but you are actually going to run these long screws through the holes that you would typically run the smaller screws through. And so you guys will see this, they kind of start to poke out and you want the end right up against the end of the base plate there. And then we are going to go ahead and grab then our rails, we're gonna go ahead and screw this in. Okay, so now that we got that cheese plate added, you will see that the rods just sit a little bit lower and this will make sense later. And so now we're gonna move on to the quick release plate on top. And you guys will see for this, the placement of these two screws is really important. We're actually gonna offset it a little bit with the center of the rail block. And so we're gonna go into these two screws right there. So it's gonna kind of lean a little bit to the left and we're gonna do this flush against the back plate. So now that we have that, we're gonna move on to this rod hinge here. And so just go in here in the back and we're actually just gonna keep it flush with the little opening right there. And the next mod that you're gonna to need to make to make this rig as compact as possible is this little plate right here is typically on the other side. You can fold it down, take out the screws and actually flip it to the other side. So that's what I've already done here, but you guys will need to do that if you take this part straight out of the box. This is gonna get our battery as close to our camera as possible. So now that we have that mounted, I wanna go on to mounting the V-mount plate. To my knowledge, this is the only V-mount plate that is gonna work for this build. There are tons of different plates, but we really need one that has the release feature here on top versus a lot of the ones have it on the side. So this is very specific. You guys will need two screws that you can put in right there. And then we're just gonna line them up with the ones on the right side here of this plate. And so we are intentionally kind of offsetting everything. And you guys will see once this is fully built why we went about that. Okay, so now that we got that snug, you guys will see our V-mount plate is now attached. This is where we're gonna attach our battery. But I think next we're going to do the stand right here. And so if you flip this over, we've got this stand and there's gonna be one kind of custom mod we're gonna do to this. So we're gonna take one of the M4 screws that came with the base plate that we replaced with the longer ones and we're gonna add 
just a little washer to it. And essentially this is gonna allow us to have two points of contact here on the bottom. And so this is a stand that's also gonna act as our quick release plate that is an Arca Swiss style. If we offset it slightly to the left, there will be room for this screw to be added on the very far edge. So we wanna still keep it mostly in the center, but you guys will see here once I get it tightened down, it is slightly offset. And this just gives us a second mounting point to make sure this is really secure. You guys will see how this kind of offsets a little bit. And we have this screw here on the left side, just barely touching, but gives us the two points of contact. And with that, we kind of have the base for our rig complete. This is gonna showcase the quick release feature. So bottom of the small rig cage has the Arca Swiss plate. We can simply put our camera right here and then clamp this down. Actually, we gotta move that down. Um, but then just like that, our camera is locked into place. You guys will see it is super compact, very similar to my rig that I did for the X-H2S. And so now we're gonna talk about kind of the battery solution and why we even added that plate from the get-go. And so if we go ahead and add our battery, this is the one from Small Rig, it's the 99 watt hour. We're just going to slide it in here to the side and you guys will see this fits really low profile in relation to the rig. So if we use the tilt feature here on the side, you guys will see that this tilts down slightly. That'll give us room to pull out our flip screen. And the X-T5 screen actually comes down a little bit farther than the X-T3 and actually lies flat. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And then we can just tighten up the rod hinge on this side. With the battery now on, we're gonna move on to the monitor. And so right here, I kinda already have this sort of assembled, but this is a small rig handle, and then this is the default monitor mount that came with this monitor. But Andy Cine A6 Plus V2 inside a Camvate cage. And the cage is actually for field world monitors, but I realized that it fits with the exception of the headphone port, gets a little too tight, but this basically gives us a locking connection for our HDMI which was kind of what I set out to do with this whole system is just secure HDMI a lot better. And so top of the X-T5 cage has a NATO rail and this is the NATO rail handle. So you guys will see this basically just slides on just like that. We're next gonna add just our rods. So these are just four inch carbon fiber rods from small rig. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in, give us some different mounting options for our follow focus. And so I did just wanna show you guys why we added that cheese plate there at the beginning. So I don't know if you guys can see this super clearly. I'll put a video if not, but it basically drops our rods lower. And this is what allows the screen to be able to sit flat. If you don't do that, this rig still works. The screen is just gonna be all the way up here and tilted slightly up. I didn't want to put any stress on the screen itself. And so that is why I went ahead and added that cheese plate. And the other quirk kind of with the battery that you guys will see, if we go to put the screen away, you see this only bends down so far and that's because the battery starts hitting the hinge. For me, this was a little bit of a quirk at first, but I actually like it because the battery doesn't completely fling open and it gives you just enough room to close and open the screen without having the battery go completely down. So you guys will see, you can just open it up some, you'll start to feel kind of the friction. You can pull the screen out and then finish this off by getting it flush. And when we talked about the V-mount plate, this is where that's really important. You guys will see on this side, we have access to the little switch in here. And so we can actually slide our V-mount out and then slide a new one in. A bunch of the other V-mount plates have the release feature pointing. In this rig, it'd be pointing down and it just didn't really work very well. So this plate was really essential to this build. As we move on to adding the follow focus, this is the F60 from Small Rig, and this is just gonna mount right on the rail right here. And you guys will see this rig, I'm actually running the Tamron 17 to 70. I have been trying this lens out for the past month or so, and I've really been liking it. And one feature of this small rig follow focus is that it gives you a friction ring. So there are no gears on this lens, but with the friction ring, it actually allows you to go right up against the rubber ring of your lens and feels super smooth. So that is definitely a favorite feature of 
this follow focus. Okay, so here's the camera with all the cables plugged in. We're just gonna talk through a few different things. First one, the cage has a locking HDMI connector, so this is not gonna come out. I have a right angle adapter, and then a normal HDMI cable. I would love to find a go-to HDMI cable for this setup, but this is what I just had on hand. But yeah, locks into the cage, I love that. And then you guys will see right here, this is those locking connectors on the X-T5 cage. So the USB-C and the HDMI lock in independently with the two little hand screws right here. So it takes a lot of the stress off the port if the cable were to snag. And I'll leave links to all these cables down below, but I'm running USB-C power from the V-mount here on this side with a right angle adapter kind of down here into the bottom of the cage and then into the side of the camera. And then the eight volt port coming out right angle of the V-mount and runs up here to the monitor. These cables are a little bit long, but I like the versatility of not having the exact length that you guys will always need. And so I'm gonna switch to this camera just to show you guys a little bit of a closer look at what this looks like. So if I spin the camera around, you guys will see there are those ports right there. Again, right angle coming out of the V-mount. And then we come up here to the locking connector. That's where we're gonna power the monitor. And then these cables, if I tilt this here, kind of go into the bottom of the cage here. And so it's definitely a tight fit. You'll need to kind of finesse it, but I kind of shove all the extra cable length down here into that little hole, but keeps everything nice and snug and gives me a little bit of versatility if I do need a little bit more reach. And so you guys will see overall, the cables don't stick out too far. That's what I loved about this setup. And you guys will see the camera does sit a little bit offset with the whole rig, but trying to line it up with the middle of the V-mount. Overall, I really love this rig for the X-T5. The only downside that I found that I could not find a solution for is just being able to remove the battery on the X-T5. I can do this on my X-H2S rig, but I think it's because the grip is wider. And so you'll notice if you open the battery door, it actually opens, but you can't get the battery fully out. So you need to undo the quick release clamp slightly to slide the camera over. And then from there, you can simply pop out the battery, pop a new one in, and then slide your camera back over and lock it into place. That is a bit of a quirk and I could not find a solution. So I don't do a ton of battery swaps mid shoot as I am running V-mount, charging my camera with USB-C, but that is just one slight difference. If you guys saw my X-H2S rig video, I was really trying to make sure the battery door was still accessible. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful. Please let me know any questions down below if I skipped over anything or anything was confusing and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.